thank you very much once again. Uh, this is really great opportunity for me uh, to provide me such an opportunity to talk to you, the wonderful people in Bengal University, Canada. Uh, I would like to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Danish Chetri and I'm country coordinator of Tony Blair Faith Foundation in Pakistan. I am running a face to faith project here and uh, I have introduced this program in public and private schools of Pakistan. I have yet not reached to madrasas and the religious schools, but I hope the day will be there that we will be introducing this program in the madrasas and the religious schools because I feel that face to faith is such a wonderful program that changes the lives of young people and producing them the real peace creator in the world. So I hope for it. Uh, the subject that I have to discuss religion in Pakistani schools. Actually, the Pakistani school system uh, comprises on three uh, sections. One is uh, the uh, private schools and the other is government schools, like uh, public schools. And the third one is Dini Madaris. The public schools are mostly attended by the poor community or the poor people of Pakistan. And they don't pay any fees. And the private schools are mostly uh, attended by the well-off people and the rich people because they have uh, lots of money to uh, to send their kids in private schools. And Dini Madaris are religious schools are especially for the religious minded people. Uh, they could be the well off people and mostly there are poor people, those who cannot afford their, the education and even uh, the living of their children. This is why they send their children to Dini Madaris and Dini Madaris are funded by different philanthropists from outside Pakistan and inside Pakistan. Uh, religion in Pakistani schools is really an important subject and important topic. Everybody has to study and learn about their religion. In Pakistan, we have people from different religions. We have Sunni Muslims, we have Shia Muslims, we have Ahmadi, and in other religions, we have Christians, Hindus, Baha'i, Sikh, and the Parsis. But the thing is that in Pakistan, mostly the, the, the religion which is taught in schools is Islam. And in some of the private schools, uh, they teach comparative religions, but at the later stages, not at the early stage. There are no examples in Pakistan that any school can offer uh, the, the education about other religions. So mostly in Pakistani schools, uh, the religion which is taught is Islam. And uh, thank you everybody once again. I was talking about the Pakistani uh, schools and the madrasas and the education system. So everywhere in Pakistani schools, the religious education is the important subject taught. And besides that, in every Pakistani home, there is religious education for their children. They teach their children uh, the Holy Quran, especially the recitation of Holy Quran and uh, the other teachings uh, and like the other basic uh, principles of Islam. So Islam is uh, uh, the very important topic uh, for the young people at their home and at their schools. And government is also focused to teach everybody, uh, the, every Muslim about their own religion. So this is uh, all about the religion and uh, education in Pakistani schools and universities and colleges. So I think I have uh, placed every information. So if you have any questions or queries, I'm there. Thank you very much. If you
you are interested in the data, I can uh, I can talk about the data that how many madrasas are there and how many uh, schools are there, how many colleges are there. If you are really interested in that. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, exactly. When we introduced this program in 2009, uh, nobody was accepting this program and there were questions and queries about the program that this program, the Tony Blair Faith Foundation's program, uh, which is introduced in schools, is, is introduced just to convert Muslims uh, into Christians. And this is uh, the same program uh, like the missionary programs. So there was a great tolerance, intolerance uh, in parents and they were uh, raising lots of questions and they were having their own perceptions. So it was uh, definitely difficult for me to introduce this program. But after three years, uh, the parents has realized uh, through the comments of their own children that how acting in video conferences and what are the topics we discuss. So, so I think now the parents are gradually accepting uh, the the program that what is inside there, and they 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 are they are thinking that it's really a good program that is that is educating young people for the sustainable peace because the students of different regions. Uh, come across the video conferences and they discuss uh, not the religion but about their own faith practices and how they practice the different festivals and uh, different uh, religious days. So I, I, I think uh, now we are going towards progression. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, you are right. Uh, in Pakistan, we are facing the same situation, and uh, the history is written for your own own uh, perspective, and you are definitely glorifying your own uh, warriors. And uh, in Pakistani history, there are lots of chapters for their own people and for their own uh, conquerors. The the history in definitely in India and Pakistan is not on the basis of the reality, but the history is on the basis of their own greatness and uh, making your, your people the great successors and the warriors in, in, in the war uh, between India and Pakistan and uh, in the past also. So this is, uh, this is really a true story uh, that in Pakistan, the history is not the real history. Thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, religion in Pakistan is, is definitely involved in politics. Uh, there are lots of political parties based on the concept of religion. And nowadays that they have a lot of role in Pakistani government and parliament. So I'm really afraid that uh, lots of uh, the people, those who are religious minded, especially of the fanatic minded people, are now coming to the parliaments and they are they are now uh, taking part in the policy making and even as in some of the moderate political parties uh, the, the religious minded people are also uh, joining those parties so i'm i'm really afraid in in pres in, in future uh, that if they people have a, a lot of role and a lot of uh, seats in parliament then they would be able to make lots of laws against the humanity. So it's, it's really a, 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 an alarming situation. Thank you. Uh, yeah, of course, uh, we have introduced this program to, uh, the, to parliamentarians and to uh, some moderate religious minded people, but we have yet not introduced uh, this program at large scale uh, because uh, this, is, this is a very sensitive program and uh, talking about uh, Tony Blair and talking about the waste and talking about interfaith harmony and talking about face to faith, it's really difficult. And 
and if you are if you are selling this program at large it means you are at life risk so we are introducing this program very moderately because uh, we have lost a uh, lot of important people and one of the governor of uh, province was killed uh, just for a one a sentence to the media about a, a, a lady which was, uh, you know, victimized uh, by the court. So it, it's very difficult, and we have to we have to sell our program uh, very moderately and very uh, sensibly. So we are trying our level best. Thank you. Uh, I think uh, the government of Pakistan and uh, the Education uh, Ministry of Pakistan is not really much concerned about uh, the global impact in Pakistan and they are they have uh, very least botheration about the introduction of globalization and global perspective in Pakistani education. They are teaching religion but uh, in the same perspective as they were teaching 50 years back, 100 years back. So, so they have uh, because the religion is the topic which is uh, the concern of the religious people. None of the moderate persons uh, come forward to talk about the impact of religion in this uh, 21st century and the globalization era. But uh, wherever in Pakistan uh, there is discussion about uh, religion and Islam and education, this is only and only the subject of the religious people. So nobody is allowed to talk about that. So I think uh, in this globalization era, still uh, we are there where we were, especially in the perspective of uh, region and education in Pakistan. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, religious minorities in Pakistan, there are uh, uh, a few religious minorities in Pakistan that I discussed. Uh, the most influential religious minority in Pakistan is Christianity. And uh, they have their own missionary schools in various uh, major cities of Pakistan like Karachi, Multan, Lahore, Islamabad and in other cities. And they have very well established institutions, but they are uh, under their, their own supervision and they run their institution according uh, their own uh, curriculum and their own uh, education uh, modality and methodology. So they are not much open to everybody. Uh, even if anybody, uh, any Muslim student is uh, wishing to go for the admissions, uh, they, have, they are very selective to choose uh, that student uh, if they wish to uh, get admission or not. So they are operating in Pakistan, but in their own uh, circumstances and in their own boundaries. They have uh, their liberty to uh, educate their, uh, their, their religious perspectives. And uh, Hindus are also living in Pakistan, but they are living, uh, the, their majority is living in one province in Sindh. Uh, due to uh, India-Pakistan uh, wars, uh, Hindu major, um, minority is, uh, is not much involved in educational institutions. They send their children to the, the nearby uh, schools where the Muslims and Hindu students are taught together. Thank you. Now, uh, according to government laws, uh, anybody can open their educational institution. Uh, any religious minority can open their own educational institution, but they have to follow the uh, guidelines of uh, the Ministry of Education. So they can open, but uh, the other religious minorities are not much interested to open their own educational institutions and teach their own religious, uh, religious uh, subjects and religious education because of the intolerance in Pakistani masters. This is why they are reluctant uh, not to open their own educational institutions and teaching their kids about their religion uh, institutionally. They have uh, their own uh, uh, religious places where they teach and where they 
discuss where they celebrate each and everything about their religion, but they don't have any institutions. Thank you. Uh, I think uh, the, the, the question that you have raised, uh, in Pakistan, because uh, there are religious minorities, but they have their little number in, you know, in population. So even in their children uh, don't go for the specialization or graduation in the religious subjects. So this is why where there is no need of, uh, or there is no any, uh, you know, uh, uh, we can say that demand from the community or demand from the people. So universities do not have their special departments for uh, the religious education subjects, uh, graduation in Hinduism or graduation in Christianity. But uh, there are the subjects that uh, they teach uh, comparative religions uh, you, you can graduate in comparative religions and at in comparative religions degree they actually taught uh, teach uh, the Hinduism Christianity Sikhism and the religions of the world but specifically uh, they don't offer any degree because there is no demand so this is why there is no supply thank you uh, I think uh, discussing the specific religions, uh, religion issues, it's very difficult in Pakistan. Even uh, the policy makers and the educators, they, they are from different religion backgrounds, but they do not touch the subjects which are very sensitive because specifically they have guidelines from the government. Uh, as you discussed, the blasphemy law or the other issues, or they talk about the interfaith education from primary level, or they talk about from the secondary or other tertiary level. So they do, do not uh, talk about these sensitive issues. They, they uh, speak about the, the, these topics, but in a very you know, moderate uh, level. They are, they, there are people from the uh, Christian community and there are people from the Hindu community, the, those who are in, uh, in the curriculum branches and those who are in the other uh, textbook departments so they they all the their their comments but not they specifically discuss those issues because this is really really a uh, typical and sensitive issue because sometimes when you when you say something but it is uh, reflected in other way so people are very reluctant not to talk about those issues as i am talking thank you uh, yes, some of the parents have uh, the resistance and they are reluctant. The, the people, uh, those who are reluctant, don't involve their children in that dialogue. But the, the people who are, uh, 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 you know, bright-minded people and they are, are open to the world and they are already involved in lots of things. So we involve the children of those people. And uh, when we introduce the program, we offer everybody uh, to be the part of the program. But those who are interested, we register and we introduce. This is why we have uh, lots of uh, reluctance in the program and we are not achieving our goals as we had in our mind. So hopefully we will be at the destination. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, I try my level best to introduce this program in the sense that uh, Face to Faith is a program which is, uh, which is a education of peace. So when we introduce this program uh, to institutions or to the uh, government or to the communities, we plainly introduce that the Tony Blair Faith Foundation has launched this program for the young people to, to make them enable uh, to become the, the young leaders of 21st century. When they raise their question that how this is possible, you are teaching face to faith and you are teaching the dialogue between the interfaith uh, students. Uh, we we come in uh, the question that we are making them capable that they should learn about the other religions in the world. They should learn uh, face to face. They should learn from each other. So when our students would be learning from 
uh, the the students of other religions from first, they will get first hand knowledge and when they will listen to each other there would be there will be no barrier between them and these young people would be the leaders of the world and they would be uh, ambassadors of their own culture and religion so so in this way we fascinate the parents and we make them realize that yes this program uh, would be impacting uh, the lives of young people in future thank you sir <laughs> yeah uh, when i introduced this program in pakistan and uh, when i uh, raised uh, the information about the tony blair faith foundation uh, i received lots of emails and they are in my account uh, the the sort of very uh, uh, religious and uh, the intolerant people, and they, they, there were the messages that uh, don't you know that who is Tony Blair and what he did in the north of Pakistan and what he did in Afghanistan and what he is doing he is a uh, ally of NATO and something uh, the uh, you know, things. I I'm, I'm very much focused and I always I claim that I am not. Uh, advocating Tony Blair, but I am advocating the program that is for the progress of young people. If the program is introduced by Tony Blair, if you, if you say that he has done uh, everything bad in the past, but he is doing good now, so why don't we adopt uh, this program and why don't we uh, get benefit from this program? So this is uh, my answer to everybody when they raise question about this. I don't know that they are satisfied or not, but I'm trying the level best because I firmly believe that this, this program is uh, a wonderful program and this must be, must be continued even if uh, <clears throat> the program is started by Tony Blair or somebody else. But if the program is started by Mr. Blair, I must applaud for him that he has introduced a wonderful thing for the young people of the world. Thank you.